Welcome. I'm here with Judy Tussie, another one of our fantastic artists of Green Cow. Um, I've named them the artist of Green Cow. They're all local residents who create wonderful art. Uh, a lot of this was on display at the Paul Henry Gallery across the parking lot, and I've snatched it to fill our walls here at Green Cow and make our space more beautiful. Every piece here is for sale. And the motive to my madness is that I believe in using local art in interiors. When I have clients come to me and they say, but I don't have an inspiration piece. Where do you begin? How do I build a color scheme? How do I pick out furniture? How do I make that space their own? And I invite them to come down here and we just walk around. And a piece of artwork is going to speak to you. It's going to say, take me home, kind of like shopping for a puppy dog. And when we do that, we have fed the children of local artists. We've supported our local economy. Why in the world would you go to a big box store and buy something mass produced in Taiwan when we have such talent here in Hammond? Um, Judy does acrylics and we have several of her pieces here at Green Cow. There's two in the room that we're in and there are a few more uh, throughout the building. And Judy, what I love most about your work is the intense jewel tone. The color just spoke to me the first time I saw it. And I'm wondering if you could tell me a little bit about why you chose the medium you work in oh. and and what inspires you to use these vivid deep purples and pinks okay. and lovely colors well i started painting when i was five years old oh my gosh my mother got us paints and my sister and i and set us down in the davenport and told us to be quiet because my dad worked shift work and we didn't have doors on the bedroom, so we had to be very quiet. So we both started painting at an early age. Wow. And we used watercolors until high school, where the art class forced us to use oils. And to me, it was like trying to paint with whipping cream after mm -hmm. using water all my life. It's a very stiff medium. Oh, so thick and, and you know turpentine and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I did it for a while. And eventually, I couldn't bear the smell of turpentine anymore. Mm -hmm. Even when they made it smell like flowers, I just yeah. couldn't tolerate the turpentine. So um, my sister was using acrylics. I tried that, and I found out I loved it. Uh, no bad smell. I can rinse it out with um, water. Mm -hmm. And um, I just continued with the acrylic, and I found out by not listening to what they tell you you're supposed to do. <laughs> I could make it very thin with water and paint almost exactly like I did with watercolors, close to it. Or I could use it very thick, and sometimes even galleries would ask me if it was an oil painting, because I just made the, the acrylic thick. So I do, um, I do love to use acrylic. So do you use a brush or do you use a putty knife? Or how do you, yeah. your brush only? Once in a while, my finger. So yeah. you're kind of a wannabe watercolor artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fluctuate between the two. Uh -huh. I did, however, find out that there were certain colors that you couldn't get in acrylic. Is that and right? I talked to other artists that didn't know that too. Some of them do and some don't. Colors in the mauve colors or purple. And I would try Which are to sort of your signature yeah, colors. Right here, right. Yeah. I'd, I'd strive and try to get a certain shade of pink and I finally realized I could get it with oil to pay the price of turpentine, or I could use my acrylics and use that. Another mm -hmm. funny thing is I use little flip-top bottles. I shouldn't be telling you something. <laughs> but some of the artists look down on that, too. Aren't you they say, oh, you can't use the craft beer. It won't last as long. Well, I Googled it. It's exactly the same paint, except they've watered it down for you. So you flip the little lid and you squirt it on the, on the palette, and you don't have to mix it with water like you do what's on the tubes. And the color is the same. So, um, Judy, do you have formal training other than high school art um, in your mother's Davenport? I, <laughs> that was good training. I uh, did start out at the Art Institute of Chicago, which I loved dearly. Very good school. But I loved my fiancé more, so we got married and I didn't continue on at the oh. Art Institute. But I did have enough teaching there that I think it helped me along the way. But other than that, I like to do my own thing and fun breaking all the rules 
did lead to a problem that and my grandson's an artist too. He always tells me I don't have a style of my own. But the thing is, I love to try different styles. I see somebody else who painted something a certain way and I want to do it that way. So you'll find all my stuff is different. And if it, I had to do the same, I would but, be bored. No, I, I disagree. And again, I haven't seen all your work, but I've seen several pieces here at Green Cow. And yes, every piece is uniquely different. Thank you. To me, that's called creativity. And But I look at the color intensity, and I know before I see the tag, that's a Judy Tussie. Oh, really? I do. I'll have to tell my grandson. You tell your grandson. <laughs> yes, because, I, you know, creativity is doing trying different things. Right. It's doing different things. And, and you know, as an interior designer, I have people say, well, what color do you like or what's in or what's your style? Mm -hmm. And I tell them, that's irrelevant. Yeah. What I like is irrelevant. Right. It's what is you. And I don't believe in what's in and what's out and what's trendy. Good. You know, yeah. I don't believe in uh, creating something that people spend their hard-earned money for that's going to be out of style in a couple of years. Um, I think that's wrong. I think good art, as in architecture as well, is timeless. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing, in my opinion, stupider than trendy. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about pink. It's a wonderful color. Um, you, you've heard of Sheriff Joe Apio? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Oh. Well, everyone thought he was being so mean by putting his prisoners in pink cells and pink jumpsuits. But the real reason is that pink soothes violent tendencies. The real reason was he's a vicious, mean animal and he should be in jail. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's my opinion. But, 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 but the reason for the pink. I, pink is my favorite color. That's but why I also asked you you on that. pink, pink is a color that you never want to use in a kitchen unless you're anorexic. Because there's a reason Fanny Mae's and Baskin Robbins use pink. Really? It makes you crave sugary sweet carbs. That's my problem. You solved my eating problem. Yes. I um, love my kitchen pink. And, I and, <laughs> and there was this real conspiracy in the 50s mm -hmm. where um, 1954, ironically the year I was born, was the year Weight Watchers was founded. I was 13. I it was that, the yeah. first generation of stay-at-home moms. The Rosie the Riveters were displaced by the men coming back from World War II, and they were stay-at-home moms for the first time. They were baking cookies, they were having teas, they were doing this and that, and it, uh, the color marketing group comes out with color forecast that go to the fashion industry followed by the home fashion industry. Yeah. And pink and turquoise kitchens were all the rage in the 50s. Yes, I know. Well, women started packing on the pounds. And so they pushed that color, the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company oh. pushed that color choice because then they came back and said, have a cigarette instead of a cookie. Because up till then, mm -hmm. men smoked, but women didn't. I did. <laughs> Prior to 1954, you were 13. Uh, right at 1954. Well, that's when I why. Started. <laughs> exactly. So but anyway, it's all this conspiracy. But they always say that a pink kitchen will make you want to bake things oh, really? and okay. eat sweet stuff. So, sweet you know, reserve pink for the bedrooms and the family rooms and the places. My kitchen has pink and preparing for butterflies in it. And I eat oh. cookies all the time. That's my problem. But the reason I asked you about pink was when, when I was a little girl, pink was my favorite color. Then uh -huh. I branched out to pink and blue and now it's more lavender and pale turquoise but I said that to an artist friend one time the pink and blue is my favorite color I'll never forget this she was so serious she looked at me and said you're an artist and your favorite colors are pink and blue condemnation without having to say anything else I said I didn't know there was a rule for my favorite colors but yes I'm sorry they are well you can see they yes. get thrown into but they're intense I and I love them and as someone who was trained, you know, with the color wheel, where there's three primaries, there's the secondaries, there's the tertiaries, I have a problem with, there's no such thing as mauve. It's a gray paint. <laughs> you know, it's a gray down red with a little white mixed in. I, I see everything in the proportion and scientific blend. So to me, a pink is simply a red with a white. 
Yeah, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you put in some blue. <laughs> then it becomes a um, different the violet. Orchid lavender. Orchids orchid, lavender. Yeah. And I love and color. I love that candle. I absolutely and color can change your outlook. Oh, yeah. Color can mm -hmm. really determine how your energy levels. Mm -hmm. And and as the piece of artwork in your space can determine the way you feel about going to work or going into your bedroom or going wherever you're going. It's interesting that you're a decorator because several times I've had people ask my advice because I paint and when it comes to rooms and a whole big space I don't have a clue. It's just not in the same place in my brain to know how to decorate a room right. Well I think we all have our gifts. And that's, that must um, be everybody fun. does something different yeah. and thank God for that. I think a key to balance, life balance, is mm -hmm. knowing what you do well and knowing what to delegate. I love art. I loved art history. I know good art when I see it, but I don't paint. I yeah. love music. I appreciate music, but I don't play. Mm -hmm. I'm an idea person and I'm a delegator. I know how to pull it all together. That's great. Yeah. And. Um, I love these pieces. They just, they make me comfortable. I think that's the word when I first saw your art. They make me feel comfortable. I do a lot of animals and a lot of beaches, and I think that it shows that I love animals. That's one of my purposes beyond just painting a pretty picture, is I hope to share with other people the way I feel about animals and make, maybe make them more sensitive to the fact that they're more like us than people think that they are. Mm -hmm. and, and then I just love the beach, so I painted a lot. Too. You spend a lot of time at the beach. Oh yeah, I go summer, fall, winter, and spring. <laughs> I have some winter paintings, but I found out from one gallery owner that people really don't want to see the beach with snow on it. They'd rather have the sunshine and the trees. Oh, the sun. why? I think that's so I'm ridiculous. I've the snow on it, but she, she's been selling art at the beach for years, so she said the one in the summertime sells. Well, it. maybe that's because her customers are there in the summer time and people don't could come be. into her shop in the winter time if be. she's a beach yeah. shop yeah. but I just think there's nothing more majestic than you know the white caps on yes. the lake when the sky is gray and overcast my summer home is close to Lake Superior oh and to me that's probably mm -hmm. one of God's most magnificent creations oh, yeah. and there's nothing I like more than just watching the you know, mm -hmm. the energy, the fierceness of it, that it's so much bigger than we are. Yes. It always cheers me up to go to the beach. It can be Cedar Lake or a pond or any place that there's water. It just always makes me feel really? better. So you know, I'll have to see Lake Superior someday. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, that, that's one of my inspirations. If I run out of things to paint, which I don't usually do, I go to the beach and I take a few pictures. And I'm not for painting outside because you have the wind and the sand mm -hmm. and it's just messy. And Some people like that, but I don't. But no. I take photographs of the beach and bring them home, and I can take my time. I'm very slow. Sometimes I'll spend 20 hours on one simple beach scene. Or when I was using the computer, I would spend, I uh, or logged up like 45 hours on one painting that I did on a screen with an Entwist pen and tablet. Really? And then I found out most galleries didn't want something done on the computer because they're thinking that you have. Uh, just hit a button and digitally made it. And what I was doing was painting one line at a time, taking forever. But I stopped the computer. Something this like this. How about how many hours or do you remember when it is something like that? That one got changed quite a bit, so I'm going to say probably 15 to 20, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I'm slow. <laughs> and, well, 15 to 20 hours, and once you start, are you so engrossed that you forget to eat and go to the bathroom, or is that spread over a couple of weeks? It's usually spread over a couple of weeks because I get tired easily, but one night when I was doing a computer painting, I saw this bright light in the window in the east, and I said, what is that big light? It was the sun rising. I had painted oh, all night. Oh, all night. night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. That was so much fun. That's so but, neat. Yeah, I do enjoy it. There's been times in my life, like when my mother was sick and my husband, and I couldn't paint at all. I remember sitting down actually crying because I didn't have time to paint. So I can't imagine not doing it. I can't. You know. Either, because, you know, what is it they say, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life? Oh, yeah. And I've always thought that was such a nice statement. But um, 
Judy, thank you so much thank for taking the time to come down and share with us. It's too bad I couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> I think you did just fine. I think you did well, very well. I think you did great. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it.